Hi, Mike. Okay. Well, I guess I'm used to sort of being on time. That's good, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, so first, Hello, <laughs> first, first order of business. If the clerk could call the the roll, please. Director Bruins. Here. Director Harpulian. Here. Director Craig. Here. Director Tate. Here. Director McAllister. Here. Uh, Alternate Director Paul. Here. Vice Chair Rennie. Here. Director Simidian. Here. Director Miller. Here. Alternate Director Martin Milius. Here. Director Gibbons. Here. Director Harney. Present. Thank you. And Chair Sinks is absent. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next thing that would have been on our, our agenda was a closed session to review um, property negotiations for the offices that we are, are trying to get. Um, unfortunately, the offices that we thought we had were pulled out from underneath us and um, we're kind of going back to the drawing board a little bit on that. So we won't be having the closed session tonight and item number four, which was discussions of that lease that now doesn't exist, um, is also canceled. So uh, I guess next on the agenda, is there any public comment for items not listed on our agenda? Seeing one person, um, do we have them fill out cards here or? So, so speak first and then uh, fill out a card so, uh, so she'll have your, a record of you, so please give us your name. Uh, so name is Mike Balma. I'm on the board of Carbon Free Mountain View and also with a uh, solar nonprofit organization. And uh, the, the comment that, that I wanted to make is that uh, um, the Peninsula Clean Energy just recently, they're in a little bit more advanced uh, or, or accelerated pace, uh, but one thing that happened there is they looked at their net energy metering uh, process and you know how much to incent you know solar folks and things like that very quickly very quickly and so they left it sort of at the very end and as, as an afterthought and I just uh, they, they decided to agree, go with the same thing that uh, Marin and Sonoma has and that that may well be the right thing to do but it didn't make people feel very good that it seemed like a rushed decision. And so I'd like to just say that that's one of the things that given our time timeline should probably be put on the agenda so that it's not left to the last minute. Because there are a lot of um, solar folks that want to be advocates for what's going on here. And it's nice to get that sort of, I won't say out of the way, but at least um, understood and given some thought to instead of just rushed, because there was a lot of confusion uh, at uh, Peninsula Clean Energy on that. So that was the only topic I wanted to have. Um, so thank you. Okay, let me see if there's any questions for you. Director Harpunian. Uh, no, this is not for him. I'd, I'd like to, to uh, take advantage of, of something that's not on the agenda. Okay, uh, any, so any questions? All right, thank you. Um, okay, so. Is, okay. is that a board member announcements? Um, is it more appropriate under board member announcements or? I would, I would just like to address the resolution that was sent uh, forward. And I think that it's not on the agenda, so I think that it's just fine for me to, to comment on it here. Okay, that seems all right with, with me. Unless, there's a, unless you'd rather have it someplace else, but. Um, so y y you can comment on it, but we can't really have discussions because it's not on the agenda. I absolutely understand. Okay. Um, the, the, this particular resolution, uh, it, its history dates back to a similar resolution that was made at Portola Valley, uh, was, was observed and brought forward to our Environmental Initiatives Committee, and the Environmental Initiatives Committee said uh, we would like to, for green reasons, have the default be 100% green rather than uh, what is currently being proposed, I guess, is 50%. And uh, what Portola Valley did and what this is, this is copied from is uh, they just asked to have, for their city, to have a different default for uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the request when it went, when it, when it went out uh, to uh, each resident. And the default, if they don't choose something, would be 100% rather than the 50% or some other number. And so the, the committee uh, essentially copied that resolution 
they basically petitioned and, and made some real effort to get the council to agree, and the council unanimously agreed with it. Um, and the wording is similar, and it, it says approves and authorizes. Uh, we, we recognize that uh, this committee is responsible for setting that. And uh, one of the changes to this is that <coughs> Uh, the, the approval and authorization is based on a uh, 5% uh, total difference in, in cost. And uh, I, I expect that that um, uh, will uh, be borne out uh, by what we're, what we're currently proposing. So I, I just, I'm bringing that forward. Uh, it's just something for the, for the committee to consider uh, if it, if it proves to be an issue, I think that we should bring it up and discuss it. But that's all I wanted to say now. So let me make sure I understand. You're, you're suggesting that we allow cities to have which of, which of them becomes the default per city? Yes. Okay. So um, I guess that's something we should um, maybe start in the executive committee discussion? Um, are you guys going to be okay? No. No. How about this? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Good. Uh, we were made aware of the resolution about uh, two or three days ago. Uh, needless to say, we want a little time to think about it, uh, figure out a way to do it, and uh, we'll take a month to do that and come back to you in September with uh, some approach or some ideas of um, how to implement it. Uh, and um, obviously, we need to make sure that it's all legally uh, correct and and um, and gets gets everybody signed off on it then eventually the board will have to decide. I, th I thank you for that consideration, uh, and uh, that's all I'm asking for. Okay. Thank you. Does, is there any other members of the uh, public, or I guess the board, which <laughs> wish to uh, address something not on the agenda? Okay. Um, Mrs. Martin Milias? <laughs> I, I'm stuck on first name, so I'm trying to make sure I get the last name. <laughs> Director no, Milius. <laughs> it's um, uh, something that is no longer on the agenda. Do we have any other options <laughs> as far as, as looking at uh, properties? Um, I, actually, I was going to address that in um, item five in, in, I, in my report. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, so uh, another. Comment from the public. Um, did you fill out a card yet? No. No, I just arrived. Okay, I'm please Ron give Swenson. your name and fill out a card afterwards for the yeah. clerk. I'm Ron Swenson, and I am here just to say a couple words. Um, I know from the work that's being done over in Santa Cruz and Monterey County that one of the things being considered going forward is to buy power both from established locations that are already producing renewable, but also uh, within district and outside of the district, new generation capacity. And I know that there are policies which are very much uh, encouraging to additional generation capacity, and there are policies which are not. And to the extent that I can be helpful in that regard, having worked for many years with people in the industry, I'd be happy to volunteer my assistance to, that, to help to establish policies that would be favorable to getting additional generation within our district, the, the uh, territory of the, uh, of the association. So I just wanted to make that comment as you go forward. If there are policies that might encourage us to do a better job than Sacramento has done, in terms of bringing more generation by renewables into the mix, I'd be very interested to help in that regard. Okay, thank you. I, um, so in your card, I guess, yeah. give us some contact information so staff will have that. Yeah. Over there. Okay, sir. Uh, anybody else? Okay, seeing, seeing no other comments, we'll move on to the next agenda item, um, which is the consent calendar. And a, approval of minutes. Does anybody have um, a question on the minutes or comments on the minutes? Or public comments on the minutes? No? Do I have a motion? So moved. 
Okay, we have a, mo a motion by Howard and a second by Director Bruins. Everybody always just calls me Howard. I'm good with yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Director Miller. I'll get used to the last names here. <laughs> Director. <laughs> um, so all in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? I'll so, abstain. I was in the meeting. Okay, we have... Uh, uh, but 11 approvals and one abstention by Cupertino, um, Director Paul. Okay, so moving along to our next agenda item, which is executive committee report, um, which I guess that's me to give. So we've we met two times since our last board meeting, and we met uh, first on July 22nd. At that time, our executive committee members um, uh, Dan Harney, Liz Gibbons, Rod Sinks, myself, John, John was absent, Howard Miller um, were present. At that time, we reviewed three prospective properties um, for our offices, and as I mentioned earlier, um, our first, we gave feedback at the time on our first choice, and we thought we were going down a road, and that is um, that has changed, and we're resetting a little bit. Um, at that time, we also discussed job classifications, and th there was comments from the committee that we appreciated how much detail were in the in the job descriptions. Um, we also discussed um, the new um, Silicon Valley Clean Energy Employee Handbook, and we gave a number of suggestions um, that when we came back on August 4th again, uh, it was noted that all the suggestions were adequately imp uh, incorporated, and we were quite happy with that. Um, also, so moving on to August 4th, we also met again. Um, and at an earlier executive committee meeting, we suggested that uh, staff look into hiring um, professional HR providers instead of hiring our own HR people. And we provided some uh, suggestions at that time. Um, on August 4th, the CEO returned with um, a proposal to hire an HR consulting firm um, which would help us, uh, among, among providing other services, would, would help us choose uh, which HR firms or, or service firms um, we would use for different services. And the, the committee agreed that was a, a, a good approach. We also discussed the compensation schedule. Um, we reviewed salary survey data um, for uh, di the, some, some of the different areas. The CEO had suggested a budgeting set point and salary ranges. We recommended some, some changes to those, and we're going to look at those in item number five later tonight. Um, we also reviewed uh, some of the latest cash flow plans. Um, so that concludes my report. Would any of the executive committee members like to add something? Howard, or to Mr. Miller. Howard is good. <laughs> Just call me Howard. I'm retired. You can call me Howard. No. Um, in addition to the cash flow, we did we did go over um, sort of the funding financing model and some of the options as well. And um, I, it sounds all dry when you describe it, but we spent four hours. I thought they were long but productive <laughs> meetings, right, John? And uh, yes, <laughs> I, I think we're making a, we're making good progress. Any other comments? Um, any questions from anybody else? Uh, is there any public comment on this item? None? Okay, so that was uh, just an informational item. So let's move on to um, agenda item number three, CEO report. Um, CEO Habashi, please. Uh, I have a number of things to report on today. First, the, the workshop that we've talked about uh, in the last meeting that is now set for August 27th, that's a Saturday. I'm hoping that uh, all of you will be there. I know there are at least five that declined because of um, various reasons. It was the best day that we can get as many people as we possibly can. Um, I'm certainly hoping that the, the people that declined will be able to make it if, if possible, but if they can't, I'd be more than happy to um, get together with them one-on-one -on -one and kind of give them the crash course Try to summarize the eight hours in, in one or two hours. Uh, is it going to be videoed or something so it could be watched later? Uh, I think that's a good idea. We'll, we'll talk to the people that are handling the logistics. Um, 
There are two requests for proposals that will be going out in August. One is for the power supply for the next five years. We've already talked about that in the last meeting. And the second one will be for data management. The, the, that's the people that will be getting all the notifications for opt-outs and recording it, and later on managing the relationship between us and PG&E. We are expecting the two contracts to be uh, executed or entered into uh, sometime in November and December of this year. November most likely to be the data management folks, and December will be uh, the power supply. <clears throat> uh, also, I've made contacts with people from the ISO and pg e both organizations we need to connect with and sign agreements with right after we, um, uh, or simultaneous with getting the certification from the CPUC. And I'll be meeting with the, one of them, at least the pg e folks, I'll be meeting with them on Friday, and the ISO folks most likely will be next week, just to kind of get to know these people and, and start the dialogue with them. Uh, attached to uh, my report is the community outreach report, which we're going to try to do once a month. We'll tell you what we've done last month and what we will do over the next few months. And if you have any questions on it, I got Misty over here ready to answer them. And finally, the report on, uh, on uh, office space. Uh, the, after that deal with the, with the folks in Sunnyvale fell through, I've uh, connected with the brokers one more time yesterday and today. I spent a few hours, uh, yesterday I was in Campbell, looking at areas that are close to light rail. Today it was in Mountain View and Sunnyvale, uh, areas close to both the light rail and somewhere around to an, a mile or two miles away from, from the train station. Finding something that is close to the train station is becoming quite impossible unless you want to pay a lot of money. And uh, I'm guessing you probably don't want to pay that much money for the space. I know I don't. Uh, I've I found at least four, four spaces that, that would look and I think would work for us. Uh, and I'm getting the spreadsheet from the the folks that are doing the, 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 the broker, and they're going to give me a spreadsheet sometime tonight, hoping that by Friday I'll narrow it down to one or two that we can uh, make non-binding offers to and go back and forth. And if we get to a point where we think we have an agreement, uh, hopefully we'll be able to connect with the executive committee before the end of the month and tell them what the agreement is, then eventually bring it to the full committee in September. Let me just add to that a little bit. And so um, I think we talked about an executive committee, but maybe not everybody here. Um, part of the uh, parameters that we thought were a good idea was to be close to transit and to be in one of the cities that is part of our um, Joint Powers Authority, which eliminates San Jose and Santa Clara and Palo Alto. Yes. And uh, that ends my report, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, does anybody have any questions? Director Gibbons. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, comment on the uh, outreach program and offer a, th a thought. Um, I'm assuming that all the events as they have occurred is being kept on a, um, a running list so that we can backtrack if we ever need to. And I would suggest, since I see farmers markets here, um, there's a Campbell's farmers market that is very well attended. We do have a lot of San Jose folks, but still it's a very, very well regarded one. There's also, that's on a Sunday, there's West Valley College farmers market that's on a Saturday, which has a very solid following um, in the West Valley cities. There's a De Anza market, I don't know when that is, at the De Anza College. And um, I was also going to recommend um, looking at real estate um, associations, uh, organizations that I think um, you might be able to make a presentation at uh, one of their regular meetings. We have two active real estate groups um, in our area. And I had another note here. Well, that's all I've got written right in front of me, so that'll be it. <laughs> Are there any other comments or questions? Director Harpunian. Hi. Uh, first, with regard to the workshop, um, I'm, I'm wondering, a couple questions in that area is, uh, 
Well, first, I'd like to thank you. That I think it's an extraordinary offer to uh, uh, work with us individually in the event that we can't make it. Uh, that can be a huge sink on your time. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, the that the these this workshop is also appropriate for the alternates uh, for our positions. Yeah, actually, we invited all the directors and the alternates. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that. Yes. Okay. Uh, th thank you. Uh, with regard to the community outreach, if if I remember correctly, Los Altos is one of the uh, communities that's that's on that that current list. Uh, are you sending out invitations, or should the I mean, like Los Altos Hills, should we be uh, trying to publicize that also? And is there any information that we should be using for that? Can I defer to Misty? Uh, hi, yes, Misty Marsich, Communications Manager. Um, yes, we're working through our communications working group, which is staff from all of the cities are on that list. We've had one meeting so far where um, some of them attended, but I also just email them directly to, to coordinate and find out about any events in the cities that we can add to this list. Um, this is also just a snapshot. We are keeping a running total of what we have. We do publish on our website, um, you know, the ones where we're going and where we've been. So if you do want to see a list of that, um, I think Los Altos Hills is maybe one that we definitely could use help finding the right um, event or tabling opportunity in. So we definitely would um, ask you and your staff to help us find some of that. We could, I assume, work with Los Altos. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have a we have a nice relationship with them. Okay. Um, so when we but, reach out to Los Altos, but I, I think that I'd be interested in either. Uh, do you want to reach out to me, or do you want to provide some information that I could uh, distribute? Is that something that would work for you? Yeah. Why don't we work together on something like that? Great. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there any other comments or questions from the the board? Is there any interest uh, from the public to make a statement? Please come <coughs> forward. Uh, so, um, Mike Palma, Carpenter Free Mountain View, and just a s simple question in terms of the workshop, um, whether that's gonna be open to the public or, or not, uh, and certainly if it's not, if the video can be made uh, available, I don't think you'd get a lot of attendance, but certainly some of the hardcore folks who are here and, and follow this and are very supportive might be interested in, in some of the you know specifics around recs and different uh, qualities and things like that and could be supportive of of the direction as it goes forward so um, that was my you know question or, or request yeah I think the way we have this set up it's going to be a, a meeting of the of the board so I believe public are welcome if they we are not likely to have the standard uh, public comments or have the public participate along the way in uh, uh, in the presentation, but certainly they are welcome to attend. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any any other members of the public wishing to address us on this agenda item? Okay. So let's uh, move on to the next agenda item, which is item four, which has been canceled as previously mentioned so we will move on to uh, agenda item number five um, adopt a resolution approving silicon valley clean energy authority organizational structure job classifications and uh, salary schedule and so there will be an action for this one uh, would staff like to give us a report please yeah i will uh, tee this up for melody if you recall uh, a couple of months ago i've asked that we can work on all the hr stuff um, and bring it back to the to the board uh, in August we did spend quite a bit of time with the executive committee uh, put together as much information as we possibly can to them uh, but I think we're gonna have to split all the work on HR into two different meetings one is coming to you tonight and the second one will be next month what, what's coming tonight is the organization the org chart the org function the phasing of when we're going to hire the staff and the compensation next month we will give you we'll bring back the benefits uh, for for the staff as well as the employee handbook uh, and um, and that and also the contracts that we're going to have with outside vendors to administer all the hr work that we need to to get done that's going to be next month. So this month, 
I'm going to ask uh, Melody, who did quite a bit of work on it, along with, uh, with uh, one of our consultants, to go ahead and present it. Melody. Thank you, Tom. Good evening. So we're going to start by talking about the, the organization chart and the, the structure that we see uh, supporting Silicon Valley Clean Energy and building the staff team around Tom. Um, so we look very closely at the Marin and Sonoma models. Those are the other two operating multi-jurisdictional community choice programs and served as a good basis for our review. Uh, the things that we looked at carefully were whether we could lean the team up a little bit, make it more efficient, make it flatter so that there was a, more of an opportunity to collaborate across teams, and uh, make decisions about where we wanted to start building the organization as we begin to fill chairs. So here in the chart you see we've um, narrowed it down to four teams for Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Administration, Marketing and Public Affairs, the Power Resources team, which down the road would also be providing energy program assistance, and then lastly, our legal slash regulatory team. Each team is led by a director and has a group of managers and direct staff supporting them. Uh, for comparison, we have 19 positions in our proposal here tonight, including your CEO. Sonoma Clean Power operating a small, smaller program, but with more energy efficiency programs than we will start with, has 16 personnel, and Marin County's org chart currently shows about 33 personnel. Um, another one of the things that uh, we did was to look at the regulatory team as being lighter because now that there are more programs like us out in the world in California, there's more of an opportunity to collaborate across community choice programs for some of these functions. And we think that regulatory and legislative affairs is really an area where we don't need to build our own insular team. Uh, we need to make sure we have enough resources to effectively collaborate with our partners across the region. So the org chart is as shown here. The next thing we dealt with was, so how fast do we want to fill these positions? And uh, we recognize that we want all 19 uh, before we finish launch, but that we are going to need to stage them in. Just the capacity to recruit and the cost of the staff uh, demands that we go ahead and take steps. And so we're going to begin with the core admin for the team, supporting the board and the CEO, and the marketing and public affairs team. So we'll do about half of the marketing and public affairs team in this first phase. All of those hires, the five shown here, are targeted to be completed here uh, this calendar year, beginning as soon as October. And so, as Tom mentioned, next time we'll bring back benefits information, but even tonight, later on, we're asking for authority to begin recruitment for some of these positions and be able to report back to you on a periodic basis as we fill positions. The next big step we took was to identify appropriate salaries to attract and retain highly qualified candidates uh, and to um, compete effectively within the market. And so we again looked to Marin and Sonoma but went broader than that. We hired a firm called Bryce uh, Consulting that specializes in HR consulting and they did a market survey for us. And so in addition to Marin and Sonoma, we looked at our two local power providers, uh, municipal utilities, Santa Clara and Palo Alto and then also the Northern California Power Association, the joint power, uh, power purchase group that supports municipal utilities. And what they do is they take a look at the job classes that we have de devised and the job descriptions we wrote. They compare it to jobs that they can find in those comparable agencies and evaluate the salaries across those groups. The result of that is what you see here. They provided a mean salary and a median and as well as the highest salary within that group of five uh, comparable agencies. Where they weren't able to find comparisons, a smaller number of agencies was used. I think in one classification there were three comparable agencies among those five. In all the other cases there were at least four or five um, that were comparable and so they had a good group to compare with. Uh, we took information um, recommending that we use some version of the median and highest as the control point uh, for determining salary bands. And the control point is just a place in your salary band that you use for budgeting purposes. You know you'll hire some people higher than that, some people lower than that, but in the end you're aiming to not spend more than that control point on average. And after consultation with the uh, executive committee and really striving to again create a very competitive opportunity for Silicon Valley Clean Energy to attract and retain talent and to create adequate opportunity for job growth once people get into the job, we ended up setting the control point as the highest salary uh, amongst the five comparable agencies, with some exceptions. So you'll see there are four or five classifications here where we further adjusted uh, and we looked at things like whether when we look at the comparable jobs at the other agencies, one of them really is an outlier. It has very different responsibilities than we envision. Or 
if when we look within our organization, we see that we have positions that should be reporting to one another and um, having substantially more responsibility in one, we think the salary should also reflect that as well. And so we looked at parity within the organization and a closer look at job uh, comparability when we looked at the other agency job descriptions. And so in general, we used the highest point as the control point. We then established the salary band, the lowest and highest we would elect to pay a person, depending on their skills quali and qualifications. Um, 30, 20, what is it? 30% below, 10% above. We went 30% below the control point and 10% above the control point uh, to establish the salaries that you see here both monthly and on the far right uh, in annual numbers. And in the resolution this evening that we ask you to consider, uh, it is those annual salaries that are shown. These would come back to the board on likely an annual basis to consider things like cost of living adjustments and or other adjustments that may, may be needed as the organization gains experience with recruitment and employee retention. The other detail that we address and is in your packet this evening are job descriptions, draft job descriptions for all of the uh, classifications that we propose. Uh, we again shared those with the executive committee and, um, and have used the Marin and Sonoma models as a basis. We also resourced some of our own local city municipal classification descriptions where there were comparable uh, positions and it gave us a good view of whether we were aiming in the right direction locally. And so this evening we have a resolution asking you to approve the, the organizational structure for Silicon Valley Clean Energy, those job classifications, so the names and, and general descriptions for each of the positions, and the salary schedule as proposed in your resolution and in our staff report. That concludes my report. Just one more thing to add. That when you add all the, the compensation that we have for all the positions, uh, and you add to it another 10 to 20 percent of cash compensation that will come in the forms of, um, of uh, benefits, uh, the total comes to less than one and a half percent of our anticipated annual revenue. Okay. That's all. Okay, thank you. So let me start by inviting any of the executive committee members that uh, felt they would like to um, add uh, thoughts that weren't maybe uh, conveyed that, you know, we had, as you said, four hours of discussions on these various different topics. So um, let me invite you guys to add anything that you'd like to. Uh, Director Miller. Just one quick comment. You know, as we're starting this whole organization up, it's, it's, it's a little always vague and unclear what's going to happen when you go out and try and hire people. So part of the whole reason to have this big wide spread of 40 percent was to make sure that Tom had the flexibility to be able to get and, and, and get the right people in there. And then the second point was we picked sort of the high point um, as the control point, as you call it, but that's also the budgetary point. So it lets us sort of have a worst case um, look, nominally worst case look at what would be in the budget rather than setting it you know, at some average or some median. So there's a lot of discussion about that, and, and our goal was to make sure we were competitive, but also unstated by Tom was to make sure that he had the flexibility that he needed to hire um, quality people in the open market. Okay, would uh, anybody else from the executive committee? No, okay, let me um, see if there are any other direct, any directors that would have questions or comments. Director Bruins? I have a question. Okay. If the, are you taking questions at this yes, point? Yes, go ahead. So right now it's feeling like we're kind of piecemealing um, things. So we're going to look at this is just base salary. Um, we have no visibility yet in terms of what our benefits package is, what our you know, longer term commitments. So I, that's causing me a little bit of angst here. Um, and then the other thing is, as we're looking at this, and um, I appreciate the fact that our comps and all, it makes sense for us to be doing this relative to other agencies such as ours. But when we go through this, did you also look at how this compares to comparable jobs in our city structures? Okay. For example, a board clerk. I would assume is very analogous to the city clerk. Um, so did we do those types of comparisons and how does that, because competing with other agencies in terms of other clean energy agencies is one thing. Competing now with our own 
employee structures in our own cities that are all part of this is a different ball game. Okay, so that's that's two questions. Um, why why are you know why are we kind of running in in parallel with you know basically it looks like we're trying to hire at the same time that we're trying to get the rest of of the HR benefits and everything in order. So I'm going to turn turn mm -hmm. these over to staff to to answer. And then the second question, um, probably relating to Melody's um, presentation, is. Uh, when the salary survey, which is not here, but the executive committee um, saw, maybe you want to give a little more details about that. So staff, please. Um, I'll take just the, the one position that you uh, alluded to, and, and then I'll, I'll talk about it in general. It, the, when we looked at the, um, at the board clerk, I did ask the consultants that conducted the survey to find a cross dollar wise between city clerks uh, given that that's what they do and uh, executive assistants because that's what the position is going to be doing a good portion of the time which is a little different than than the city clerk who is 100 percent of the time is dedicated to working with uh, her city council and to do election and other things that our clerk would not be doing uh, so I said, look for the two types and find the midpoint between the two positions and that probably what you need to be using in order to uh, tell us what that position is going to be like. Um, so that's just the position that, that you uh, refer to. Generally, and, and having come from a municipal utility, uh, worked my entire life in municipal utilities, there was a lot of comparison always between the positions in the utilities and the positions in, in the city to make sure that, you know, to keep things apart. <clears throat> um, however, for the positions that were more related to energy and the energy field, uh, whether that to be from a marketing perspective or from um, acquisition of energy, uh, we always had to go elsewhere to look for comparables uh, because there was nobody in the city that, that does that kind of work. And that's pretty much what we've done here. We looked at other um, other associations, some of joint action agencies. We looked at Sonoma. We looked at uh, Marin. Uh, and we also looked at some municipal utilities, Palo Alto and, and, uh, and Santa Clara. And we looked at the joint action agency that does buy and, and sell buy, buy power on the wholesale market and sell it retail to, uh, to a number of utilities. Um, so I think we would try to cover both ends um, to the best that we can. So do, is there a reason we did not look at Peninsula Clean Energy? They um, haven't formed their organization. They haven't, yeah. but, but in terms of, uh, have they adopt their salary structures? I, I understand that they have adopted only for the positions that they just went out for and they've just advertised uh, for a couple of positions mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. And I did ask if they can provide some information about the compensation, and they only had one, if I recall correctly, from the ones that they advertised, where they said it's going to be between this number and that number. But for the rest of them, they just said uh, it will be negotiated. Okay. And then the last question is in terms of this um, survey. Was the survey just a base salary survey, or was it? Did, were you able to compare base salary to base salary, as well as base plus cash benefits? The, the survey um, covered so that we can the, look at the bigger. Yeah, the, the survey covered the cash benefit. It covered, uh, and we have also a list of all the benefits that the various uh, agencies provide, especially the ones that look like us, yeah, the Marin and Sonoma, and we're going to use that obviously when we put together the, the benefit package, which we will bring it to you next month. Okay, and so based on that, you're saying that the expectation then, as, as board members, our expectation should be, we're sitting here looking at base salary, then what's, then how much do you think we're gonna be adding on to all these base salaries to get to the base plus cash? You mean in terms of uh, cash? Mm -hmm. cash um, I, I don't see it to be any more than 10 to 15%, but uh, yeah, I, I don't want to step ahead of myself. 
I think it's going to be in that range because that's what I saw in in uh, survey results that came that came back because they did look at compensation and cash benefits, uh, and it seems to be in that range. And then what about retirement? Do we know what we're direction? Have you at, started talking about that one? Yeah, at this point, I think we are pretty much going the same way that uh, Sonoma as well as Marin have gone, similar agencies, which is just to do um, uh, Social Security. Okay. No further questions at this time. Okay. Any questions? Um, Director Harpoon, Harpootlian. Harpootlian. <laughs> Um, I, I have questions on a couple of the, of the areas. Let, let me start with the organization chart. Um, the, you, you have, and I assume this, um, uh, you have a, a, at least one full-time lawyer involved, or is, is it several lawyers uh, that are on a consulting basis? I don't, from the organization chart, it's a little difficult for me to understand how that works. Uh, r right now, I think the way it's the way it looks like it's the top position is going to be the um, a lawyer in in the area of what did we call it? General counsel. The general counsel. So general counsel will be a lawyer. Then supporting that position will be uh, most likely a legislative and regulatory analyst. That certainly doesn't have to be. So you have two people under that lawyer. Is is, is that the way I read that? I can't, read, I can't read the There's last one. There's one person and the rest is con consultant support. I can't read what that Here. color is. It's contract support. Contract, contract yes. support would be a lawyer and regulatory legislative analyst would be a lawyer. No, I, I, the legislative and regulatory analyst doesn't have to be an attorney. They could be, but they certainly don't have to be. The outside support, um, I, it could be or may not be. I, a lot of times, the, if they need legal help, they will hire lawyers. If they need regulatory and legislative advocacy, they may not. You just okay. contract out with a specialist, is what yes. you're saying. Yes, but, you, you, but the, 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 I'm, I'm just trying to compare this, as, as, as Jeannie was doing before, that we're more familiar with our cities. And uh, <clears throat> uh, our city is comparable in size, 18 to 20. Uh, uh, staff members, you know, and so on. And so I'm trying to figure out, you know, we have a part-time lawyer uh, and his firm uh, will supply any additional manpower that we need. So I'm trying to figure out uh, why, why we need a full-time plus at least two other part-time people. And uh, is, is this that different? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a nutshell, it is different. We are dealing in a fairly different environment that re requires a lot of legal help. The, the work that we're going to do on the supply side uh, will, um, will take an extensive amount of legal support in order to make, to make it work. And we're going to be doing that all the time. There will be constant acquisition of our supply. There will be constant negotiations that we have to do with suppliers. Uh, and the legal support is definitely needed in that area. Uh, we will need uh, attorneys to deal with all the issues that we, uh, we have to work out with the CPUC and PG&E and the ISO and all the other acronyms that that we've been laying on you for the, for the last few months. So um, it, it is different than what's going on in Los Altos Health. I'm not in any way downplaying the issues that you folks are facing. It's just we are facing different issues. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm with with apologies to. Uh, the, the other directors, I'm going to do a, uh, uh, a typical engineering type of thing. And, I'll, I'll f and to do that, let me follow your direction and take board clerk and look at the salary study on that. And uh, let me look at the study result indicates 11232 as the highest salary. And then I look at the proposed monthly, and the maximum that you have would be 12100. Um, and we've gone also from a median of 9960 to a control point of 11,000. It looks to me like uh, we, we, we've taken our study results and added about 10 to 15 percent to get our control point. And then when we look at the maximum, we're actually looking at uh, 
something that's almost a thousand dollars a month higher um, as a monthly maximum than the highest that we can find in in our study and if as I go through all all of these they tend to follow the same sort of thing it looks like uh, we have a, a planned effort here to increase the base salary of, of people in all these categories by about 10 to 15 percent so if, if you could comment that on that I'd appreciate it sure um, if you recall initially we looked at it and we said the the base salary is somewhere between the median and um, and the maximum and uh, after having a fairly long discussion with the executive committee uh, they felt that we need to set the control point which is what we were trying initially to set it between the median and the max they said you really need to set that closer to the to the max number uh, given the fact that we here in the bay area things are a little bit more expensive uh, than they are in, in other places, in the places that we compare to. And also, given the fact that we're going to be budgeting at the control point, we're not going to be budgeting at the maximum, which is 10% above the control point. We are budgeting at the control point. So if you have to give somebody more than the control point, somebody else is going to have to get less money than the control point. Um, so generally, you really have to be beyond expectation in order to be pushed beyond that control point which is the maximum that you see here in the range um, and we still have 30 percent below that control point that we can hire people at and we can as they can grow into that position and as they their skills mature and they become invaluable for the organization then we can if need to move them above the control point and if I can just add to that, also the, the discussion in the executive committee was this would be in effect until January 2018. So it's really the next 18 months. So if you got somebody that was doing really well, we wanted to give you some room to be able to reward them with an increase before you brought this back to the board for new set points and salary ranges. Yes. Can you use the microphone? So Howard, could you, how, could you how, use your microphone and restart? Howard, would you, you like to comment since this was actually oh, it, our yeah, okay. passion point? It was. Yeah, we got, we got data which is really looking in the rear view mirror, and that's all the data that was given, and then we have to project 18 months, and then we have two other goals out of it that, that we wanted to achieve. One was the budgetary number, of which John was very clear we'd, we want to set a budget number that, that we know is going to be worst case. And then the other one was to make sure there was sufficient dynamic range, which Rod alluded to and Tom actually alluded to. Based on a person's experience, they could fall anywhere within that 40% range. Um, and so we can hire the people. And then if they're doing a great job, there's some space in there for Tom to potentially uh, give people raises before we get to 2018 and adjust these, these rates again. Again, we're just starting out. We don't know what the market's really going to be. We have some good measure data. But I think the last thing we want to do is budget for an average or a median and then have Tom be back here every time he has to hire somebody and say, hey, I want to go above this because I found a guy with seven years of procurement experience that's done great work or I've found a fill in the blank. So we wanted to give Tom the flexibility. We wanted to budget for the worst case. And then we've, we've clearly told Tom, and we can reiterate it tonight, don't spend any more than you have to to get the right people. But I think we've given him the tools and the flexibility to do what he needs. And we've set a worst case scenario for ourselves by picking the control point at the high, which means our budgetary numbers will always match. Director Gibbons, did you want to add to that uh, explanation? Yes, please. Um, just to um, help out, uh, we had, I'm going to say, a rigorous, robust, and raucous conversation <laughs> for a fairly lengthy period of time. And um, a lot of this really was rehashed and rehashed and rehashed. Um, in addition, prior to that, I did, in fact, check in with staff on a couple of positions. Um, I was asking about the attorney and could we share the attorney with another uh, agency. And the answer, um, as I understood it, was... Uh, that right now what we're doing is proprietary and it's heavy contract oriented. Um, there's a lot of legal 
maneuvering that we have to be prepared for and down the road we may change uh, the scope of work of the attorney. Um, I did compare it um, to our city attorney um, and it's in the right ballpark. I did compare the uh, board clerk with our city clerk. It is in the right ballpark and I did check um, a couple of other administrative positions um, in the right ballpark. The finance manager was less but um, the scope of work here is less than what a city finance manager does. So I'm going to say my um, shoot from the hip overview, uh, in addition to the survey, um, this seemed to be good based on our really detailed discussion of what the purpose of this analysis was and what it did to provide the flexibility for a successful team. Um, to um, take us uh, down the right path. So let me give it back to Director Harputilian if you have more questions. Uh, I'd like to make two comments on what have been said. Uh, the, first, the first is with regard to the lawyer, a legal firm, or what have you, is that it, uh, my experience on hiring these people is limited, but uh, it's not immediately clear to me that we would do better hiring somebody as a full-time uh, uh, lawyer as opposed to finding a legal firm that we are comfortable dealing with and, and, and working with uh, a partner in that legal firm that you know, has, uh, has a huge amount of experience and, and additional members to fall back on. So the route that's being taken here is far from clear to me is, is the route, right route. Second, uh, if, if you, to, to me, uh, th this uh, salary study, to me, is deceptive because we're saying our maximum is only 10 percent more than our control point, but we don't really mention the control point is 10 to 15 percent above our median. You know, if, if, we, if, if you wanted to, I would suggest you take the median and use that as the control point and say the maximum is 20 percent. At least then I'm, I'm looking at something that uh, I don't feel is, is deceptive. So, John, we had that exact discussion, um, and that was actually one of the proposals on the table. Again, the problem with that approach is that sits, because we're using the control point as our budgetary point, it puts us in an awkward situation where Tom, potentially for the right people, is going to uh, exceed our budget, and then we end up honestly wasting a bunch of our time and Tom's time uh, discussing some salary that's off by $1,000 to hire an exceptional candidate and it has to come back to the board. That's why we sort of biased the thing higher. The dynamic range, that the 20% the 20 up and 20% down, we had that whole discussion. 40% range is pretty normal. Uh, if you look at the step systems in cities or you look at the ranges at an Apple or an HP or Google, they're all about 40% wide for a job title. That bias point, that, that they, the control point as they're calling it, we set it on the high end on purpose so that we wouldn't be exceeding the budget so Tom wouldn't be back here every time he found a good candidate. So let's go to Director McAllister because I know you had some passion on this one too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you looked at the cities that they, uh, I don't agree with John, this. that the cities that they picked were Marin, uh, North County, and then we looked at Santa Clara and Palo Alto, I said, well, wait a minute. Our cost of living is so much higher. And then I gave you the example of Mountain View has a fairly good uh, salary structure, and we can't retain people, and we can't keep people, because we're not paying enough money, and people can't afford to come to our areas. So I suggested that we go with the high side and forget the medium, or, or sort of eliminated what the North County was doing, because they just don't pay, they don't have the same cost as we do, as the, the CEO Tom had brought up. And so I figured, let's go to the high side, uh, because I thought it was skewed wrong for the cost of living in, Mount, in, in Silicon Valley than it was for North County. So you took two of those cities out, and by that, it just raised the cost to the higher level. So the medium was sort of a uh, designed a little bit lower than it really should have been. And so that's why we went to the high side. Let, let me give Director Tate a chance to say something before we go back to John, the other John. Uh, John has more. I, I wanted to bring up a separate. OK. Um, well, anything else on this uh, particular I, question? I, I guess you know honest people can disagree, and I and uh, you, you've gone through more of a detail on this study than than I have. I'm not sure that I have all of the data that you had available to you. Uh, but if you felt that that North County just was irrelevant, then why didn't you just throw it out and and 
and develop a new median. I don't know, uh, uh, you know, to, to uh, give uh, Tom a, uh, an option to hire, uh, you know, somebody at, at almost $1,000 a month uh, higher than anybody in this study uh, just doesn't seem to make sense to me. So, John, let me make a counterpoint to that. This organization needs to get our act together and start procuring power. This organization needs to get our act together and start figuring out how we're gonna roll out power programs in the organization. And every brain cell that we consume of this body and of Tom's body on, on uh, HR activities or on whether or not he's gotta find somebody that he thinks is great but that's gonna accept a salary that's $1,000 less than what, what you would be more comfortable with is, is totally missing the big point of what we need to be doing. Um, we wanted to make sure Tom had the flexibility to hire great people, and we need to trust our CEO to make cost-effective hires. Why bother There's doing no the salary survey at all? So we know where to set this, the salaries at. We need a starting point. But, but again, I, I think we, we waste a whole bunch of time not paying attention to the big picture. The big picture is Tom needs the flexibility to hire the right people. And if we as a board don't trust him to minimize the cost of the staff while still hiring great people, then we've got a totally different issue. You're only worried about what, what amounts to, uh, if you took all of them, ten or $12,000 in an organization a month, so let's, let's say $250,000 a year, which I'm exaggerating now, in an organization that's going to be $250 million a year. Um, the battlefront is not whether we set the control point at the maximum or at the average between the high and the median. We debated that as an option. The, the battlefront here is to give Tom the flexibility to hire great people and, and trust that he's going to do it in the most cost-effective way. So I, I'm just trying to get us back to the big picture of what we're trying to do. Get great people so we can procure green power and get it to our citizens. And all we're doing with this item is give Tom the flexibility. So, Director uh, Harp. I'm not trying to say that the ideas are bad. I'm just saying that, that we have a lot of other things we could use Tom's brain cells on, and, and we're just trying to make sure that this is not one that he has to waste a lot of time. And those were the same things on the HR front bringing in an HR consultant that can deal with all this stuff so Tom doesn't have to, gets him to what he does best, which is figure how to get power for our citizens. Okay, so I don't want us to beat John into submission, um, this, so he understands our, our, uh, <laughs> you know, our thought, and then he has the right to disagree. Um, so, Director Gibbons? I would just offer, too, that we um, have an executive committee to actually go into the detail of this type of issue. We did. <laughs> and we are offering in support of the presentation um, that um, the director or the CEO has presented tonight. Your, your points were all valid and all discussed. But uh, again, the position of the executive committee is to go forward with this approach. Tara? Um, Oh, okay, sorry, Director M Martin Milius. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would just add to that that as a, a non-participant but observer of the process, uh, I can validate that it was a robust conversation and, and the points were uh, discussed widely and the whole purpose was to get us moving. Okay. Um, Director Harputlian, would you do you have other subjects? Would you like to continue on this one? Uh, this this is this is the uh, last of the subjects I wanted to discuss on, in this area, and uh, I I, uh, I I still don't I, I'm still not convinced, and I, I'm looking at you know trying to uh, look at the highest you know that was found in the salary survey and say that. Maybe if we give them $900 a month more, some, what does that come out to, $10,000 a year more, we might be able to hire them or hire somebody. So uh, that, I mean, what, what you have is, is you're giving you know, a range that's higher than the highest, and that's all, I, that's all I'm looking at here. Okay. Um, can and we move on to Director Tate? I'm, 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 I've, I've said my piece. Okay, Thank great. You Thank you. Director Tate. 
Well, first of all, I, I really appreciate the uh, executive committee taking as long as they took, and I think they did a great job. I only had one question on, on this thing, and that's when you look at the uh, community outreach manager and you look at community outreach specialists, and you think that specialists would report to the manager, um, and they don't on the organization chart. And I've just got a suspicion that, that maybe the community outreach specialists which are salaried at about half of what the community outreach manager is salaried at are not really community outreach people. Maybe they're analysts of, of more of the data or something. I'm just wondering if that's the right title or something like that. Can I direct that to staff, please? Sure, I, th I think when we, uh, when we looked at the organization chart, we just wanted to highlight the directors uh, as the department heads, so to speak, then everybody, even though the, everybody's reporting to them, it's very likely to have one of the specialists doing work for one of the managers, um, but they generally will work as a team. So I, I, I see quite <coughs> likelihood that we're gonna see some of, the, uh, some of the levels below the department heads with some of them reporting to others. Uh, we just didn't wanna put it out now as, as such, will, but that will work itself out eventually. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the directors? Director Gibbons. Uh, I would just um, like to offer that since we reorganized and uh, took out the HR uh, function and the recruiting and so forth, that perhaps they should be shown as a specific uh, contract support um, on the chart, uh, perhaps uh, you're thinking of under administration of finance or whatever. Yep. So I think um, yep. that uh, would be good to add. And uh, let's see, is there any other notes here? I think. In terms of the organization, I think that was it, and we discussed um, the rest. So thank you. Let me uh, let me go to the public first. So is there any um, desire for public testimony on this item? Please approach. Again, uh, Mike Balma. Um, just one comment I noticed that uh, in terms of the hiring plan, in terms of the timing. Uh, the director of power resources wasn't uh, supposed to be hired until January to May, and yet we're actually supposed to be starting to deliver power in April. So it was just an interesting point. You would think, you know, maybe your capabilities are able to manage that, but uh, so that would be useful to know. Um, yeah, I think um, the, the area where we knew that we need some help and quickly is uh, the board clerk as well as the area of community outreach. Um, the area of power supply uh, I think is well covered. I, I know enough about it and we also have a consultant that we given, uh, that we hired the Pacific Energy Advisors. They've been working with us now for over a year and they will continue to work with us. Uh, for uh, months, perhaps even years to come. I think between them and myself, who can cover that area uh, well uh, into, 90, in, into 2017 if need to, but I think it would be best, I think, at that time to bring in somebody sometime in the first half of next year uh, to take on that, uh, that department. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, uh, Director McAllister. <laughs> Director John. So I noticed Mr. Kirby's down here as a treasurer. Where does he fit into our uh, structure here? I'll, I'll let him come to <laughs> you, you just showed up. But I'm, a, I'm a volunteer. As far as I'm oh, you're a volunteer? <laughs> Are you? I'm, I'm the finance director for the city of Sunnyvale, so I'm part of the yeah, interim staffing, helping with the. So will we have a treasurer? Yeah, of course, we, uh, as soon as we, um, we get a finance director, I'm hoping that uh, Tim will stay with us past November until we, we have a finance, uh, a finance manager, then we'll be able to um, shift that responsibility over. And he's looked at our salary structure, so he's, he, may not, he may stay with us, huh? <laughs> That's, don't say. I, I won't comment on that. No I, say, I, I no. will be here as long as I need to be here. So our finance director slash treasurer, I mean, it's going to have multiple titles then? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Director Bruins. 
Hang on a second. He controls my microphone. <laughs> um, one final it's, question. It's something I've, I've wished to have a long time. <laughs> in, 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 in terms of uh, Director Miller's comments, in terms of making sure that you have the, the power and the tools to do the hiring and such, it begs the question, where, in terms of these positions that we're talking about, where is the pool of candidates? Are they local, or is this something where we're talking about relocation packages in addition to? Uh, I don't know where the expertise is, so. Good point. I, th I think from the local side, there will be the cities of uh, Santa Clara and the city of Palo Alto, both of them have staff, have full utility that has supply area as part of it. Uh, we likely also to pull from people in Sacramento. There are quite a bit of talent over there with a lot of uh, municipal utilities as well as some closeness to the to the capital. Uh, they, we may end up having people applying from out of state that are, for example, experts in the supply side. Yeah, I've had already somebody from uh, Atlanta giving me a call saying, yeah, this would be really interested if I, I would be very interested in this position uh, and the, the kind of experience that they uh, that they have fits really well with, with uh, at least one or two positions that we're going to have open at one point or another. So the talent will be coming from everywhere uh, to the extent that we talk in relocation. I, I don't know. I mean, if we if we really need that talent and we're willing to pay a little extra to bring him in, then we may need to do that. And obviously, I'll be coming back to you for for approval. Well, I mean, because the cities and all, I mean, it's more than the, the relocation. Actually, is the cheap piece. <laughs> it's the ability, and you know, if, depending on what level of positions you're talking about in terms of the housing, and it's becoming a little bit more common in terms of looking at housing loans and such, and so. You know, I just did the executive committee kind of go off into that part of the discussion in your robust, raucous, and I forget your third R. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure we did not talk about relocation expenses. Mm -hmm. okay. Four hours and you didn't cover that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the, any other uh, questions from Director Givens? Uh, thank you. Just the other um, portions of this motion. Uh, I, I wanted to be sure that um, all the positions, and if uh, staff could confirm, which we're going to ask to have Form 700s uh, submitted for, uh, because that's an important um, aspect, I think, of our role in the protection uh, of transparency. And um, I also um, wanted to... Um, make sure that the um, attorney was reviewing the contract for the HR consultant because we had some questions about that. So before we go forward on that, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, uh, as it relates to the Form 700, we will certainly ask um, Tricia or Greg when he comes back and make sure that he identify which positions we need to, uh, uh, that need to fill that, that form. Uh, as it relates to the contract, we actually tossed the contract out and replaced it with our contract, and I shipped that their way, saying this is the one that we're going to work with, and they're fine with it. Director Miller? Just one quick item on the Form 700. There's the, those who need to, and there's those who we would like to, and I would suggest that for transparency reasons, we go with a broader net. We will. Any other questions? So I'm now looking for a motion. We have a, resolu a proposed resolution um, in our packet which includes minimum and maximum salaries and it talks about the org chart which I think there was suggested addition to it and it talks about uh, the executive officers, officers going to, is authorized to, init to initiate recruitments and the, the uh, executive officer shall create and maintain needed job descriptions of which most, or if not all, are attached. So is anybody interested in a motion? <laughs> Dir Director motion. Tate. I'll make that motion. Can I make, Can I make one comment before the motion is made? Because it's made and seconded. I know, but then <laughs> I have to do a friendly, and a friendly amendment. 
let me just make a comment, which is, can you add to whatever your motion is a, a, a statement of, of uh, uh, fiscal prudence on the part of the CEO in the hiring? I mean, we're giving them a lot of flexibility, and to John's point, I don't think we want to be just saying, oh, if you get the maximum. So just to make sure that our motion clearly carries that sentiment. Well, I feel that that is understood by the <laughs> by him, but if you would like to act, add it to the motion, just don't for object. clarity, that would be my. Does request. the seconder of the motion agree to that addition? <clears throat> well, during our robust and raucous uh, <laughs> discussion, that was brought up, and we, uh, my sense is from the executive community that we had complete confidence in the discretion and judgment of our CEO, so that I don't think it was really appropriate that we need to make it because I think it was well spoken and. It, it was. I was just trying to gather consensus amongst those of us here. If I could just say just one word, is I, I appreciate what, you, what you're doing, Mr. Miller, uh, but uh, I recognize the importance of, of moving forward in, in an expeditious manner. Uh, and uh, I think that my expression of, of, of concerns in, in, this, in, in this meeting is, I think, more than sufficient to... Uh, uh, yeah, I argued your exact points for an hour in the executive committee, so we're of one mind, so <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Uh, are you finished? So, so uh, you know, I, I'll, I will support the, this motion because I recognize the importance of it. So, uh, and the, our necessity to, rather than quibble over some number of dollars, I think that the important, uh, importance of, of moving forward with the, with the, with the, the uh, uh, program. So uh, there's no question in my mind about, about that. Okay. So my comments are completely unnecessary then. Thank you, guys. But thank you very much for so, thought. So just to cl clarify, so the seconder did not agree to the addition, so that's not part of the motion. Um, it is not part of the motion. I think he withdrew his uh, He withdrew it. So we're back to the original motion. And let me um, clarify. I mentioned uh, amendments to the org chart that Director Gibbons, was that part of your motion or, or is your motion just as is in the, um, uh, the staff report? What, what, did you do to the org what, what did you do to the org chart? Uh, I'm gonna go to Director Gibbons on that. <laughs> uh, we uh, recommended that the HR department, which oh, was Oh, absolutely, on the yes, that's part of the motion. So yeah. that is part of the motion. Was that under your understanding, uh, Seconder McAllister? Okay, again, that was one of those other items that we had discussed at the executive committee. So, um, the fact that we, we discussed it at the executive committee and then we have to put them added to the motion, uh, I don't know if this is necessary. I would, well, you're saying that the, she's the asking, lawyer, she's would asking. The, the lawyers would review our. Director McAllister, no, he, what she's asking is just to no. add the word HR management in the contract box, which is definitely needed, because oh, we're not. Okay. That's all it is. Because there are such a robust <laughs> conversation that I'm leaving. Yeah. Adding <laughs> HR right there. It's okay. So just for the org chart. I'll second. I'll, it will, he, is, the motion. Director Tate agreed, agreed, I believe. And, and I'll accept it. Okay. Oh, no, because <laughs> it's Howie's. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, discussion? Vice Chair, can I just confirm that the motion is as stated in the, rec the staff recommendation it's with the addition of the HR clarification HR. in the contract? That's correct. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Uh, I don't think I see any, so um, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? That sounds unanimous with 12. Okay. We are on to something else. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> item, item six, update on banking and credit services. Uh, and this is a discussion with no action. So um, staff, report please. I'm gonna ask Tim to go ahead and give us the report. Good evening. I, I, I just wanted to start off by saying I wanted to thank the board for um, allowing me to serve as your treasurer. I haven't had an opportunity to say that yet. So I wanted to say that now. Um, we are, have been working on um, the banking RFP, and by we, um, I mean uh, the cities of Cupertino, Mountain View, and Palo Alto, uh, and Sunnyvale. I grew up in Palo Alto, so I seem to, seem to be stuck there. Um, and Mountain View taking the lead, and I wanted to recognize them, them and Cupertino for the effort they've put in, in addition to Sunnyvale, on this, on this effort. So I'll be very brief, but I just wanted to um, update you on the process, where we are, and sort of where our results are. Um, we've 
uh, had a very successful procurement. Um, we released an RFP for banking services and credit, and um, we got uh, strong propos proposals, and we have one very good proposal, so we have a lead proposer that we're negotiating with currently. Um, essentially, the finance, it came in two pieces. There's the deposit services, and just to be clear, um, currently the authority is, uh, is um, their banking is through the city of Sunnyvale, so we have a separate bank account for the authority, and we're separately keeping accounting for the records of the authority. That will be moved over to a new banking agreement. And um, there was also um, a proposal for credit services. And we were anticipating um, less favorable terms than we received. We received some very good terms. And I'm sure Tom is very happy about this because it'll enable us to get moving quickly. So the, um, the credit comes in two pieces, essentially. There's the pre-launch credit and that, which is in the two to three million dollar range. And there's, and, and I'll spend most of the time on the credit here because the banking's boring. It, it all looks good, the fees are good, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, the, there's two pieces, there's the two to three million dollars needed before we launch, and then there's a 20 million dollar line that's available to procure the power. So the first piece, um, the, the proposal wants guarantee for the two to three million dollars. So that means uh, some of the, one or more of the agencies has to back that two or three million dollars. The 20 million dollars came in without a guarantee, which we did not expect, which is excellent terms for us. Um, the rates on both lines of credit are very good. They're um, gonna be around a little bit north of 2%, which is a great rate. It, they're, they're adjustable, they're running LIBOR plus some um, some additional amount depending on which term it is. I'm sorry? 175. 175. 1. Yeah, it depends. The first one's the, the first line's 175 and I think the or I'm sorry, the first line I think is 125 with a with a, a line with the guarantee backing. And then the second one is uh, the 20 million is 175 plus LIBOR. So that's going LIBOR is running a little bit over um, 0.46 percent right now. So that's a pretty good pretty good terms. Um, so as I indicated, the um, this first line, the two million, I think Tom's looking for $2 million right now, has to be backed through a guarantee by the agencies. And we've been in discussion, one or more of the agencies, we've been in discussions amongst a small group of us. Um, there are some um, complications between whether you're a general, general law city or a charter city. Charter cities have more, or charter county, have more flexibility to do these types of backings, providing guarantees to other agencies. And so um, several of the agencies, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, um, we've begun talking, speaking with the county, have been discussing providing the guarantee on behalf of the authority. And in fact, the Sunnyvale City Council last night did take action to authorize Sunnyvale um, to, to start working with the other agencies to provide up to $1.3 million in either a guarantee or a direct loan. So we already have one agency on board to provide the guarantee. So very good news for you tonight. And uh, did I? Neglect to cover anything else? Just that we're coming back next month. That we're coming, oh, the timeline, <laughs> thank you, Melody. So the timeline is, is we're planning to come back in September with the banking contract and the credit terms finalized, and hopefully uh, switch the banking over at the beginning of October. And so um, we'll also have probably agreements coming forth. We're not sure if it that will make September on this, but we will need individual agreements between the um, agencies that are providing the guarantee and the authority. So we will bring those back as well as soon as possible, hopefully September, but it might be October for those. And, and so my first question for me, um, those will come back to us for approval for of, of which items? All, all mentioned or maybe? You, you'll be approving the, the banking agreement, the credit terms, and then the agreements between the guaranteeing agencies and the authority. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Director McAllister? Yeah, I thought you were under discussion with the county to uh, take the full line of credit. Uh, how did that, uh, sounds like that conversation ended. We're still, we are still in discussions with the county, so nothing has been settled yet. And um, we're, I'm still trading this, you know, the discussions just started earlier this week, really, so in, in earnest. So we're still going back and forth with the county and Mountain View. I've been, um, you know, trading some discussions with, with Dan Rich also. Who's, so now, if, who's now out, but yes. 
the one of the uh, items was possibly that the county would take it and with county Ma uh, supervisor Smitty in here saying that they could have done it without going through their board and so they possibly were going to pick up the whole thing instead of dividing it among cities so my understanding is that they the county staff indicated that they did make, need to take that to the board oh, yeah. but that's as far as we've gotten so I don't I don't want to speak for county staff we, we're still okay. talking with them daily okay and one other question the, the third city that's a charter is Gilroy yes has Gilroy been asked if they would like to participate Gilroy is on my to-do list tomorrow okay thank you any other questions director Miller wouldn't it be easier just to have one agency rather than to have potentially four separate agreements, four separate contracts, four Absolutely. second motion, motions? Absolutely, here? yes. Okay. So that, that would be the goal. Yeah. I'm still looking at the count. I'm just surprised Sunnyvale came up short like that. I thought they had lots of money. <laughs> uh, Director Gibbons. I, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I do think um, that in the executive committee we discussed that uh, ever so briefly, and one of the issues is timeline and the county if it does have to go to the board was going to take longer than the time we had available so i think staff's pulling all of those various equations together i know we prefer one agreement but again it's timeline that's important for us yeah, and that's absolutely a consideration um any other questions from directors uh let me see if there's any questions or, or whether there's any comment from the public no comment from the public, okay. Uh, no, nothing else up here. This is a discussion item, so we don't need uh, any motions. So then let me close that item and move on to board member announcements. Would any board members like to make announcements? Director Miller. Yeah, I'm not, we don't have exactly a category for this, but I'm assuming this would be the spot. I, I would like to uh, get a better understanding at a future meeting uh, how we're going to deal with rooftop solar. Uh, we have a larger percentage of rooftop solar or larger capacity than Sonoma or Marin, just in our jurisdictions. So a valid point was raised. I know we said we'd do the same thing as what PG&E did, but, but maybe we just need to clarify that. And another point that I, I'd like to better understand some of us directors have been talking about a tagline, uh, you know, 100% greenhouse, gas-free, and cheaper than PG&E. And if, if that's an unrealistic sort of uh, point of view, um, I'd like to know that. And if it is a realistic point of view, where we were cheaper than PG&E and we were 100% greenhouse, gas-free, would that then not be the default for the whole the whole authority and, and those are both future items I don't expect them to be answered tonight but uh, I do think that as a, an agency I'd like to somehow address both of those maybe in a memorandum to us if it's just clarifying some misinformation um, or something more formal on the solar to clarify what our official position is going to be okay thank you any other announcements and I guess that was sort of a random comment <laughs> Director Givens. We didn't we don't have a direction to staff things, so yeah. that's I just shove it in there. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'd just like to point out for the board's um, awareness that um, the League of California Cities in its uh, uh, email of notices this past uh, week uh, indicated that there is state legislation on JPAs and um, changing the um, structure of JPAs and the appointment of uh, authority of JPAs for alternates. So just be aware of that in your own uh, legislative um, cities issues. Um, at the last meeting, we had asked, I had asked for um, a copy from Godby of the Marin survey, and I think they were going to get that to us if we could still continue with that. And um, in terms of publicity, um, here um, is a, a, a thought. Um, I think it would be helpful, like we have a cash flow timeline, I think it would be good to have an outreach timeline and probably identifying categories of different things because we do, as, as my favorite line is, we're focusing on the big companies, which is fine, but we have different groups. Um, we have the agricultural group in Gilroy and so forth. So we want to keep track of not the ver various constituent groups that we want to reach out to and some of the, I'm going to call it professional organizations that we could read out, reach out to. I had said earlier um, the real estate group, there might be property management groups um, and so forth. And one uh, vehicle that we might be able to leverage some money on because um, uh, of uh, joint uh, with San Mateo 
uh, Peninsula, is we might be able to do some joint TV or radio ads talking about CCE, general education information. Um, I think because that's a, a good audience, um, we can all volunteer for a PBS or some type of fundraiser, bringing awareness of uh, CCEs. And um, there's a nonprofit group uh, called um, SVTP Silicon Valley. Um, I've forgotten, I'll have to remember it. It's a volunteer group of people who help nonprofit organizations at the civic level to develop apps and different kinds of things. Um, so we can contact that. I sent you the link to that um, this afternoon. And there's another um, community uh, press release organization. I don't know if it's quite uh, appropriate. A lot of police departments use it for um, alerts, but it's Nixie, N-I-X-I-E. Nixel. Nixel. N-I-X-L-E, thank you. I can't read my own writing. And let's see. Uh, one other thing that was mentioned in here um, in the staff report and outreach uh, comments from um, the meetings that you have had was the uh, charging, uh, electric charging stations. And um, be aware that a lot of municipalities have electric charging stations. And for example, uh, Campbell um, has an agreement with Colcom Technologies, that's C-O-U-L-O-M-B, used to be ChargePoint. And you can check on the uh, process of those agreements and the rates of those. They will likely be different than what businesses have, but communities are adding them more and more to their public parking garages and streets and different things like that. Um, so you want to be aware of that. Uh, okay, that's it. Anybody? Uh, Director Martin Milius. Thank you. Um, just tagging on to uh, Commissioner Gibbons. Um, I've been asked to speak at a couple of things, and I'm sure everybody else on the board and all the alternates will be asked to speak as well. And uh, these are professional meetings and so forth. Um, I'm wondering if we might have a common set of core, a few core slides that would always have the same image, the same, the branding. So that, that, we, uh, that we have the same look. And and the uh, and the base just the basics covered, uh, and then we we could add our own spin to whatever city uh, we're speaking to or whatever group and their interests. But if we had a common set of core, f a few core slides, I think that would be um, very helpful, and it would also keep the message contained. Yeah, that would be nice, and in, in, in PowerPoint, not in PDF, so that we can add our own stuff to it. Okay, sure. We'll make sure that. Um there's a form that you all get to use if you want to speak on behalf of, uh, of uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Uh, uh, any other announcements from directors? Um, any closing comments from staff? Okay, well then, we're adjourned then. Nice to meet you.